Okay, part two. Now, like I said, you don't need anybody. Now, let me talk briefly about what it is that God is like, okay, or what spirit is like, okay? Because, like I said, I think God kind of gets a bad rap. And God gets blamed for a lot of things that I don't really think have anything to do with God. Like, as of this writing, it is February 27th. You know, we recently had the earthquake in Haiti. Just yesterday, there was a huge earthquake in Chile, and I think a pretty big one in Japan also. And people are saying, you know, oh, it's God's judgment, it's God's wrath, it's this, it's that. And I'm like, well, not really. I mean, okay. What happened in Haiti was a terrible humanitarian disaster, okay? That's true. There's a lot of people suffering, there's a lot of people still suffering, and that's bad. And a couple hundred thousand people died that day. That's also true. But here's the thing. A few million people lived, right? So people are like, oh, well, God smote Haiti, or why did God let this happen? I'm like, seems to me God saved way more people than didn't get saved, so, if that's the case, then how can you say that that's any kind of judgment? And more importantly, when you talk about natural disasters, like I live in California, okay? Anything but blizzards hit California, and blizzards still hit some parts of California, right? There's earthquakes, mudslides, forest fires. We just had a tornado, like, last month, which was, like, freaky, okay? So, nature is just doing what nature is doing. It's only a disaster if you're here when it happens, Right? Like, I don't think the Earth has it in for us. I mean, like, you know, tectonic plates shift sometimes, and the things that are on it kind of get shook around. Right? You don't have to add in this whole, like, gloom and doom perspective on it. You know, that it's this hammer of an angry God. Because let me tell you, again, if God wants to smite you, God will smite you. God doesn't need any help finding you. Okay? <laughs> if he has it in for you, you'll be walking down the street on a sunny day and get hit by lightning. Or just drop dead from a heart attack. No problem. So you don't really have to be worried about that. Okay? You know, when you talk about trying to interpret, you know, God's will and meaning and God's character and what God is like, to tell you the truth, I think the easiest way to figure out what God is like Look at what people are like. Look at at least look at the good parts about people. Well, for now we'll take a we we'll st we'll not talk anything about us being fallen or whatever. Even though I don't think we fell anywhere. Look at how a parent is with their child. Okay, you know people say things like, "Well, if you're sinful, you're gonna go to hell." And I'm like, "Look, if God is all knowing and all powerful, okay, that means when God created everything." He knew what we were going to do in advance, if God is all-knowing. He knew what we were going to do in advance, and made us anyway. So, if I'm going to be a sinner, and die in a state of sin, and go and burn for all eternity, that means God knew when He created me, that I was just going to suffer forever. Which means God would have made me to suffer. And that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think God is like that. I really don't. Um, because why even bother, right? Now, look at your own children. If you don't have your own children, look at kids. Kids make mistakes. They get into things. And you might be angry and you may have to punish them, but do you hate them? Do you want them to suffer for the rest of their lives because they spill paint on the carpet? No, you don't, right? And so I think that's how our Creator looks at us. We're, if we really are God's children, which most religions tell us that we are, assuming that religion has a God, not every religion does. But if we really are God's children, then why would God give us infinite punishment for finite sins? It doesn't make sense logically, okay? Now, when you look at having a church or a temple or a mosque or whatever that needs you to do what they tell you to do, that needs you to jump when they crack the whip, then it's kind of hard to dominate or control people who know that God loves them no matter what, and know that they're going to be fine no matter what. So then you need, you know, something to hold over their head, and then suddenly sin is this huge big deal, right? The original Greek word for sin is harmatio, I think. I have it written down. I'm sorry if I say that wrong. And what it means in both Hebrew and in Greek is to miss the mark. That's literally all sin means, to miss the mark, to try and fall short. That's it. 
okay? Now, over the centuries, it's become this huge hellfire and damnation. You don't make mistakes, blah, 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 or you're going to, you know, burn. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense logically. If you just take a second to step back from it, look at it, shut off your conditioning for a second, and just ask, would an all-powerful, all-loving God do this? And the answer is no, because that God is either not all-loving, because he wouldn't create us to suffer forever, or that God is not all-knowing because he didn't know what was going to happen, right? Now, there's a little more to this, but I don't want to go too far down this because I don't want to offend anybody. But my point is, is just stop and think about it. Just stop and think for a moment about what you really believe and why and how much of it is cultural conditioning and how much is it is what speaks to your own mind and your own heart is what is true because you are more than capable of deciding in your own mind and in your own heart what is true does that make sense because a lot of my friends are people that I've known that are the least tolerant of other religions which for the most part the least tolerant people I know are creationists and atheists I wrote an article about that about how creationists and atheists are actually pretty much the same thing it's on the examiner.com. That was the third article that I wrote. So if you want to know why a creationist and an atheist basically are the same type of person and think very similar things, check out the examiner.com. But when I run into these intolerant people, I always ask them the same thing. I'm like, look, I'll make a deal with you. I will believe that your religion is absolutely right. I will believe that your religion, and by the way, atheism is a religion. I will believe your religion is absolutely correct if you can just do one thing for me. If they're a Christian or an atheist or what have you, I'm like, if you can quote a single verse from the Quran, I will believe you. Or if you can quote a, a single verse from the Pali Canon of Buddhism, I'll believe you. Go. And of course, they can't. They can't because they've never read it. You can't refute something you don't know. How can you say that Hinduism is a false religion or Islam is a false religion if you don't know anything about it, okay? We've been spoon-fed this, a lot of us, especially in the West, especially Christians, that are nobody but us is right. Nobody's going to heaven but us, right? And that does a disservice to us, and it does a disservice to the whole world. And that's why you kind of see a lot of the strife and the discord that you see in the world. Because here's the thing. If you've seen the face of God, if you've heard the voice of God, if you've recognized the interconnectedness of all things, then it does not matter what you call that. It does not matter if you call it Great Spirit, or Mother, Father, God, or Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma, or Allah, or whatever, because you will be connected to it, right? You know, a rose by any other name will still smell as sweet, right? It does not matter as long as you are connected to the source of all things, as long as you are linked in with the flow of all life, then you won't feel it necessary to get in somebody else's face about what they believe. You won't feel it's necessary to pass harsh judgments on other people in the way that they make their way through this world. So that's a pretty good test. How well do you know God? How much do you feel the need to get in somebody else's face about what they believe? Because here's the fact. This is what you need to know. If you're trying to go out and convert people and win people over or wage war on other faiths, two things. If God wanted them converted, they'd be converted. <laughs> if everything they can see in the world hasn't swayed them to your point of view, and, you know, if God couldn't sell them, how can you? And the second thing, if God wanted them removed, they'd be removed. If there was some evil religion or something, it wouldn't exist if it angered God. Because God can kind of go, and it's gone, right? So you just need to decide for you. You have to figure out for yourself. You know what? I'm enjoying this. I'm going to stop this now. This one's going to post on Sunday. I'm going to go ahead and record the next one that I guess you'll see on Wednesday, and we're going to keep going. Okay? So, I love you. Find me. PeaceLoveMoney.com, well, MySpace, YouTube, Twitter, B. Dave Walters, I'm everywhere, okay? And check out the website, come today, buy this books and stuff, it's great stuff. You don't even know what I've got, you haven't even been there, come on. Oh, and for my international brothers and sisters, I fixed that shipping issue, so if you had a trouble buying something before, you can get it now, okay? Alright, love you, and I'll be right back.